So, a year and a little bit after the Sennheiser Momentum Force came out, Sennheiser has finally released their Ascentums, which are their new entry-level ANC headphones. Now, the Ascentums look very similar to the Momentum Force, and they also have a very long battery life. But there are some very big differences between these two headphones. Nonetheless, today we're going to compare the Momentum Force to the Ascentums, and we're going to see which one's right for you. We're going to pricing. The Momentum 4s are a year old now and they have a retail price of $380 but they like to go on sale for $300 and sometimes they like to go on sale for around $250 which honestly isn't bad for these headphones even though they do have their issues. But then there are the Ascentums which have a retail price of $180 but these like to go on sale for $150. Nonetheless, if you're going to pick either of these two headphones up, they'll be linked down below or you can always try the YouTube shopping button. And if you want to to further support the channel, pick up a big head approved hat. Link down below. We've got trucker hats and snapbacks. By buying a hat, you help the unbiased and unsponsored videos coming, and it also helps us cover more products and produce more versus videos. Thank you to everyone who's already bought a hat, and look out for more designs coming soon. And also, please remember to hit that like button and let's get subscribed. Now first, let's talk about these included carrying cases. Unfortunately, the Ascentums don't come included with the case, which honestly is a shame because there are plenty of other entry-level ANC headphones out there that come included with a case. Whereas with the Momentum 4s, these do come included with a hard shell case. My main critique about this case is that it is relatively big, so it can be a hassle to travel with. But something about this case is that when you take these headphones out, they will automatically power on and connect to your phone, which is really cool. The only problem is, at least for me, is that I found that when this case is vertical, like let's say they're in your backpack, your headphones can power on and they can get connected to your phone, which can be very annoying. And even after a year, it doesn't look like any of these recent firmware updates has fixed this issue. Now, I got these headphones when they first came out. So maybe this isn't a problem with newer models of this headphones, but uh, just be warned that this could be something that might happen. But now, let's talk about the headphones themselves. Now, design-wise, these headphones look very similar. They both have a mostly plastic body, they both have a lay-flat design to them, their headbands glide very gently in and out, and they have padded silicone underneath their headband. The only real design difference is that the Ascentums have plastic on the top of their headband, whereas the Momentum 4s have fabric. But other than that, both of these headphones have a decent feeling leatherette on their ear cups, and they're both built like a tank. But when it comes to their fit, these headphones are very different from one another. Most importantly, the Ascentums have a lot of clamping force, so I would say that these aren't big head approved because they feel like they're squeezing your head. And I have tried stretching these out, but they're still tight. So the Ascentums, I'm gonna have to say that these are for guys with smaller heads or for women's. Whereas with the Momentum 4s, these headphones still have a firmer fit to them, but at least these, I would say that they are big head approved technically because they don't feel like they're going to pop your head but in general it seems like these current Sennheiser headphones are meant for guys with smaller heads because Sennheiser's previous generation of headphones weren't this tight but clamping force aside, both of these headphones have very well padded headbands and hotspots aren't an issue. They both have fairly spacious ear pads, so even if you have very large ears, then either of these two headphones will have you covered. The only thing is, the ear pads on the Momentum 4s do have more surface area coming in contact with your head, so they can heat up a little faster. But also, there's their weight. The Momentum 4s weigh in at 295 grams, which isn't bad, but these are a little heavier than your Bose QC Ultra and Sony 1000 XM4s, which both weigh in at 255 grams. The XM5s weigh in at 250 grams, the Bose QC45s weigh in at 237 grams, and the Bose QCs weigh in at 235 grams. But then there are the Ascentums, which weigh in at 222 grams, which is around what you'd expect for a pair of entry-level ANC headphones. But then there are the Watcha 720Ns, which weigh in at 193 grams. But overall, the Ascentums are noticeably lighter than the Momentum 4s, but personally, I do prefer to wear the Momentum 4s because these have a less clamping force, but with these headphones, they are a lot more noticeable when they're on your head, but at least they aren't as bad as the AirPod Max, which weigh in at 384 grams. But with fit out of the way, let's talk about tech specs. 
Now, regarding Battle Life, I feel that Sennheiser is really trying to make this a main selling point to attract average buyers. Now, the Ascentums have an advertised battery life of 50 hours with the active noise cancellation turned on, and the Momentum 4s have an advertised battery life of 60 hours with their active noise cancellation turned on. And this is both above average and very impressive. The only issue is, is that you can't use these headphones with the active noise cancellation completely turned off, but given they're already very long battery lives, that's okay. And when it comes to charging these headphones, they both charge via a USB-C port as they should. But the really cool thing is that you can use the USB-C port on both of these headphones as a wired connection. Now with the Ascentums, the USB-C port is the only port that you'll find on these headphones. Whereas with the Momentum 4s, they have their USB-C port, but they also still have an audio jack. So if you do plan on using a wired connection with your headphones on a regular basis, then you might want to go with the Momentum 4 because that audio jack is still necessary for like let's say you plan on flying on a plane and you want to connect your headphones into the airplane's entertainment system because with the Ascentums they don't come included with any kind of adapter so that you can easily use them with an audio jack but when it comes to Bluetooth connectivity both of these headphones can be connected to any two Bluetooth devices at the same time which is good if you're a power user because you can easily hand swap between any two Bluetooth devices regardless of ecosystem so let's say for example you can use your iPhone and you can easily hot swap to your PC with your Sennheiser headphones. And when it comes to overall performance, both of these headphones have zero latency across the board when watching movies or videos on your phone, whether you're using an iPhone or an Android device. But when it comes to audio codecs, the Ascentums have support for SBC, AAC, and Aptex HD. Whereas with the Momentum 4s, these have support for SBC, AAC, and Aptex Adaptive. But nonetheless, just keep in mind that if you do want to use Aptex, you do have to be an Android user because iPhones top out at AAC. But with all that out of the way, let's talk about sound. Now, just as you'd expect both of Sennheiser's headphones sound great and the Sennheiser Momentum 4 sound better than your mainstream options like the Sony 1000 XM5s, XM4s or Bose QC Ultra, Bose QCs, Bose NC700s or Bose QC45s. However, the Momentum 4s don't sound as good as the Momentum 3s but the Momentum 4s have a neutral sound signature with bass that comes in hard when it has to and the bass on these headphones will rattle your head a little bit but they still have really good instrument separation and they have really good detail in the instrumentals. Now, the Ascentums also have really good instrument separation and good detail, but their bass is mostly on the audible side. It resonates very deep, but it won't physically rattle your head. But also, both of these headphones have an adjustable EQ, and with the Momentum 4s, if you want a more bass-heavy EQ, or if you want to up the highs, you can do that. But with the Ascentums, I don't know what's going on with them, because if you use them with a custom EQ, they sound like they lose a little detail. So, personally, Personally, I only use these headphones with their stock EQ, and even though the adjustable EQ on the Momentum 4s works fine, I prefer to use them with their stock EQ as well. But the biggest thing that I have to point out about the Ascentums is their volume. With the Ascentums, I have found that it can be a little hard to find that sweet spot with these headphones, because for the most part, they're either too loud or they're a little too quiet. Now, the Momentum 4s also aren't super loud, but at least with these, you can more easily find their sweet spot. But over Overall, when it comes to sound quality, the main difference that you're going to see between these two headphones is going to be their bass, because the bass on the Momentum 4s can rattle your head a little bit, whereas with the bass on the Ascentums just resonates, even if you were to go into their EQ and crank the bass up all the way up. But another major difference between these two headphones are their media controls. With the Ascentums, they are using physical buttons, and these buttons are very easy to find, and they're very easy to tell apart, and they have a very satisfying clicks of them. Whereas with the Momentum 4s, these are using a touchpad, and personally, I'm not the biggest fan of this touchpad because it is a little overly sensitive. And another thing that the Momentum 4s have over the Ascentums is that they have wear sensors. So they'll automatically pause the music when you take them off and they'll start playing your music again when you put them back on. Now, personally, I don't really care for wear sensors on my headphones, so I usually just turn them off, but they're there if you want them. However, I do want to point out that the accuracy of the wear sensors on the Momentum 4s has greatly improved from when they first came out, because when they first came out, these wear sensors were very inaccurate, but thankfully, now these wear sensors are accurate. But now, let's talk about the active noise cancellation on these headphones. Overall, both of Sennheiser 
Sennheiser's headphones block out an impressive amount of noise for their respective price points. But so that you can see for yourself, we're going to jump into an ANC test. Connected. So, like you may have just seen, the Momentum 4s block out more noise than the Ascentums, and this is what you'd expect to see since the Momentum 4s are more premium than the Ascentums. And with both of these headphones, they managed to block out an impressive amount of noise without a whole lot of cabin pressure. Now, the ANC on the Ascentum is definitely usable for your bus ride commute or if you're in a chatty office, but if you do plan on flying, then you might want to go with the Momentum 4s because these do block out a little more noise. Even though I mentioned earlier that they aren't my favorite headphones to fly with because of their very large case. And both of these headphones have an ambient mode, but these ambient modes are a little different. With the Momentum 4s, you can adjust how much noise they let in, whereas with the Ascentums, you can't. But when it comes to the performance of these microphone arrays, the Ascentums do a really good job of blocking out wind noise when walking outdoors. Whereas with the Momentum 4s, they pick up wind noise when they have their ambient mode turned on, but wind noise isn't an issue when you have their ANC turned on. But also, I have found that it is a little difficult to understand people with the ambient mode on the Momentum 4s because for some reason, they prioritize noise pollution. Whereas, it's a lot easier to understand people with the ambient mode on the Ascentums. Overall, both of these headphones have an ambient mode and they get the job done, but they can be better. But also, with both of these headphones, if you set them to pause your music when you turn their ambient mode on, then you're gonna have a conversation mode. So if you double press on the main button, these headphones will lower the volume of your music and pump in all of the ambient sound around you so that you can quickly talk to someone without having to remove your headphones. And personally, I love when my headphones have this feature because it's very useful if you plan on traveling with your headphones. The only thing is, is that with the Ascentums, you can only have either your transparency mode or your conversation mode, but you can't have both. Whereas with the Momentum 4s, you can kind of have both, but you do have to MacGyver it a little bit. With the Momentum 4s, if you have them set to pause your music, if you double tap on their touchpad, they'll lower the volume of your music and pump in all of the ambient sound around you and then when you double tap on the touchpad again they'll go back to normal and if you want to actually let sound in then you can just um, pinch to zoom on the touchpad to open up the transparency mode overall with the momentum forge you kind of get both features but the usability is a little clunky but finally, here's the microphone test, and I feel that both of these headphones have a decent enough sounding microphone on them to take phone calls with while in a quiet room. But the microphone on the Momentum 4s does do a better job of focusing on my voice, and it doesn't sound as robotic. But when it comes to blocking out noise pollution, both of Sennheiser's headphones do struggle quite a bit here. Now, with the Momentum 4s, these are reducing some of this road noise. Because if we were to switch over to my lapel microphone, you're going to clearly hear all of this road noise but if we were to switch back over to the momentum force it is slightly reduced whereas with the ascentums these are letting in a lot more road noise and there is a lot more interference going on with my voice and it's the same thing when it comes to blocking out chatter this microphone is struggling quite a bit and the momentum force are also struggling quite a bit here to block out this chatter but overall both of these headphones have these internal sounding microphones on them to take all sorts of drop in the room but the the microphone on the Momentum 4s does sound and perform better than the microphone found on the Symptoms, and this microphone does do a slightly better job of blocking out some of the
But with all that being said, with both of Sennheiser's headphones, you are going to get great sound, very impressive active noise cancellation, and an above average battery life. But these headphones do have their issues. The Ascentums are a little tight, making them not big head approved, and it can be a little hard to find their sweet spot, volume wise. With the Momentum 4s, they have a very big case, which I feel is bad for traveling, and their touchpad is a little overly sensitive. But if you are trying to choose between these two headphones, the Momentum 4s are a little more comfortable to wear because they have less clamping force, they block out more noise, their microphone sounds a little better, they have an audio jack, and they sound a little better as well. Specifically, they have more kick in their bass, and their volume isn't a problem, so it's easier to find their sweet spot. If you made it this far, I guess you enjoyed the video, so hit the like button and get subscribed. If you want to pick any of the products up, there'll be a link down below. And if you want to further support the channel, check out the merch. I made some shirts and hoodies that look and feel great. And you know I can be very particular, so I'll only stamp my name on something if I'm really proud of it.